this tutorial will explain uh, you know when we generate an invoice uh, what accounts actually get touched for this I have created uh, two uh, different uh, matters for uh, Wilson Nathan one is a speeding ticket which comes under our highway traffic ad and the other one is uh, you know you're ha handling a family uh, a matter for Wilson which is Wilson Mrs. Mary uh, notice that there's a difference in in uh, in one of the matter, we have a retainer of $1,000 while in speeding, uh, Mr. Nathan hasn't provided you with any retainer. So let's add two time dockets, both the uh, you know, initial meetings. Uh, for this one, say an hour. And I'm going to add uh, two hours for the other one. And once you do that, you are ready to actually uh, invoice both these uh, uh, matters. And when you invoice them, I want to show you what are all the accounts that get, uh, uh, you know, uh, hit and how revenue is actually marked. So go on invoice and the first one, which is uh, the divorce matter. So in the divorce matter, we have a revenue of uh, $400 and there's still a balance in trust. While in the speeding matter, when we actually generate the invoice, we should see that the client actually owes his money. This is $200. $200 of revenue and 226 is what he owes with uh, taxes. Now, if you go to accounts, we would generally go to accounts receivable and we should see how this matter would have worked its way to. So if I look at the first one, which is uh, Wilson Associates for the family, you see that, you know, not only did we debit the revenue but we also credited it as a transfer from trust but for the speeding ticket one because there was nothing left in the retainer we only debited the amount that was invoiced if i would now go into my revenue section go under uh, highway traffic act i should see 200 dollars of revenue being made on on um, the speeding ticket while if I go into family and wills I should see $400 being made similarly if I go into HST receivable I should see both the accounts so $26 that we owe to the government for this one and $52 that we owe to the government for this invoice so you, you notice that what EULA does is it takes the invoice, breaks it up into three portions. One is the total revenue, puts it in accounts receivable, splits the revenue portion, puts it in the type of revenue that you actually indicated in matter code. Like could it be it could be a, a family or highway traffic act, and also records the HST in the proper account. So now by just generating reports, you should be able to see where each of those. Uh, categories fell. So if I go into document generation and do profit and loss, and I would do the, just the month of June, what I should see is under each category of uh, revenue, I should have what I actually invoiced. So if you look at Highway Traffic Act, you know, I made uh, $500 so far and family and bills, I've made $400 so far. So to summarize, invoice gets split into three portions. One is accounts receivable. The second portion is the revenue portion that gets deposited in the type of legal work that you actually did. And the last is the tax that you collected gets accounted in HST or GST or PST receivable. And lastly, if you actually had money in trust, ULAW would also take care of actually making sure that that portion of the money is actually transferred from trust. And notice that the descriptions are all as specified 
in the Law Society bookkeeping guide so that when you actually go here and create a ledger, say for uh, Wilson, you will actually see the ledgers matching matching what we actually expected. So that one is for Wilson versus Mary. You got thousand dollars and then you transferred 452 as invoice and it actually matches with what you actually expected it to. Also notice that because the speeding ticket case did not have any retainer, there was uh, no transfer in trust. So for that, what you know to do is you need to do a ledger of uh, general account and you'll actually see that when I do that for Wilson, you should now see two uh, matters. So the first matter is uh, speeding where you've generated an invoice and he hasn't still paid. And the second one, you actually generated the invoice and we actually did a trust transfer. So you notice that you are clearly as requested by the Law Society puts the ledgers in that format. So to just complete the entire thing, we're going to go back to the speeding matter. And because you have invoice for $226, Wilson is going to send you a check and we're going to enter that payment. Say $226. And check number was 28. We put it in uh, you know, one of your banks and it's for speeding and you just apply it. Now you should see that he was zero dollars. And now if I would go back and generate the exact same ledger, you'd see the difference between what was there before and now. So clearly ULOC captures all the money transactions properly. So for speeding, and you see that we generated an invoice for 226 and a check 78 actually arrived for 226. While for the other matter, uh, where you generated an invoice and there was money left in, in, in trust, you were able to actually withdraw the money automatically out of trust.